Dan Borsi here at the Whitman Coin and Currency Convention in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm standing with Stephen Booth of the National Federation of the Blind. They have a booth set up here at the convention. There's a, there's a new Braille coin coming out on the market in a few months, Stephen. Can you, can you explain that to me and tell me the significance of this event? Yeah, 2009 marks the 200th anniversary of Louis Braille's birth. Louis Braille was a, was a Frenchman who invented the system of Braille dots and reading back in France and over 200 years ago now, and it's the system that's still used today. And the reason it is is because it's the only system that's equivalent to print. Braille is um, like little dots yeah. where people who are blind, instead of um, seeing, they feel the letters. It's hands-on. It's touch, it's reading words, sentences, gramma you know, grammatical things. If you listen to something, if you uh, look at something, you're not really getting the full image unless you're actually reading print or braille. So we find that braille literacy then for the blind is the same as, as print literacy for the sighted. So the coin, um, which will be sold later in 2009, um, some of the proceeds from that will come to the National Federation of the Blind for a project called Braille Readers at Leaders, which is going to be our effort to to double the uh, number of children that learn Braille within the next 10 years. Right now, about 10% of blind children are taught Braille, and that's just too low. You'd never tolerate that in the sighted world. If, if you were told that your kids were going to school and were not going to learn to read, you'd go crazy. I mean, people would be just up in arms. And, well, that's what we're facing. We're facing a literacy rate as low as about 10%. Tell me who you are here, and we'll, and we'll put your name in Braille, and I'll give you the card. You can keep the okay. card. I. I, yeah. L. 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 Y. Y. Okay. And you can see if I made any mistakes, and if I did, I don't want to know about it, but see how I did. There's Emily if I want to type something out, of course, I can, I can also do that on a typewriter or now a computer. So when people say Braille is obsolete, they're wrong. It's actually becoming more available than ever because of technology. This is the first coin in United States history. It is a commemorative, yep. and it's being released with Braille on the coin. Right. It's the first coin that ever has that we ha actually has the actual Braille code as, as structured properly with the right dot configuration and the right pattern. It's got the word BRL, which the letters BRL stand for Braille. In Braille, we have a lot of what we call contracted words, or words that are sort of short form to try to save space. So the word Braille, instead of being all spelled out, B-R-A-I-L-L-E. On the coin, what you actually see are the letters B-R-L. And those letters represent Braille to us. And obviously, Louis Braille is the subject of the coin right. as Louis well. Braille was an interesting man. He was a, a, a child in France when he lost his sight at about two or three years old. And by the time he was 15, he had come up with this invention. He took, a, he took it from a code, which was called night writing. And it was, a, it was a code where they used smoke signals in the war. To, to help military people see in the dark. In those days, you had no current technologies that you have today. And he took that same pattern and developed this six-dot system. Prior to that time, you had only like raised print and, and diagrammic images, and the unfortunate part, you couldn't write it. There was no way to reproduce it. So Braille's revolution was that he made a system that you could both read and write and feel under the scope of your index fingers, and that's what really revolutionized the whole structure. It must be very hard for, you know, a person who's blind to handle money out in normal society every day. Well, not really. I've been, I've been spending it for the last 45 or 50 years, but what we do is, all joking aside, we do, we do organize the money in certain patterns and try to find a way to, some of us put it in our wallet and folding it in different ways when we get it, um, where you might put it uh, crosswise or put a 10, uh, you know, vertically, or you might put a, fold it in half or something. I separate my bills by using business cards. I put all the ones in one part of my wallet and then after another business card, the fives and the tens and so on. I would urge any collectors and dealers to, to pick these coins up, um, the significance that it is the only Braille coin in United States history, and the fact that some of the proceeds benefit the National Federation of the Blind, it, it just makes it that much more of a good cause. So. I hope people purchase it, and, and, uh, and we're looking forward to uh, making it available with the men, and uh, it's going to be exciting. It's been a pleasure talking to you today, and well, I appreciate so it. Thank, thank you, Stephen. Thank you.